and welcome to the third video on the kind of EJ stuff and this is a bit of a mess this one because kind of looking at a couple of starter motors well one of them I didn't include in here wiper motor wiring loom we start building a stand for the engine it's just lots and lots of bits and pieces to see what we've got to see what we need and all that sort of thing so without banging on too much about it I hope you enjoy so we'll start with these pictures. I think they were taken from a computer screen by the look of it, of the grain motor we're using in our EJ. Um, this is the way Graham received. I think he said it was lying sideways under a tree or something. Anyway, he took it home, cleaned it up, took the head off. Um, I think he put a head gasket in it and put it back together, gave it a nice paint job and started up. And it ran very, very well, but it did have a smoking issue. I'm just going to include that video now for you to watch. things that's really good fun is just going through junk and working out which bits we want to use and which bits we don't and that's what I'm doing at the moment walking sticks and there's an oil pump that is in one piece I'm tipping that's not too bad we've got I don't know how many sets of these um, rocker shafts and I think I've got three sets of those, or four sets of those. I think three came from Graham. This is a good advance line. That's in great condition, I'll keep that. Slinger. And there's just a myriad of bolts. Just crap, there's a fuel line. I'd be inclined to make a new fuel line. And the rest of it's just... Hang on, we're not done yet. There's another set of rocker shafts. Looks like a brake line. Um, oh, dipstick. And that's the body off another carburetor that came. And the rest of this. Is that a sump reinforcement? That wasn't supposed to happen, was it? And it's just a matter of sorting through all your fasteners, though, like the side plate things and. Had it be a Ford, have been a Ford or a Toyota, I'd have some hope of knowing what these bits do. There's a broken dipstick. Given it's a grey motor, I actually don't know. It looks like a camshaft thrust plate. And so, that could be a flywheel. It's grade 8 by the look of it. We need bell housing bolts. Because we're going to make up a stand. I don't like bell housing bolts. I don't know this, I'm just making this up. That could be, and the only reason I know what that is, I think that's a timing cover. But you get to know these things the more you muck around with them, and I haven't really messed yet. But I'm just going to sort through and see what I've got here, and I'll be in a bit better state to know. I've been sorting out bolts, we've got all sorts of business going on here. I've got head bolts and there's some bearing bolts there, surplus to the two blocks we've got here. That's for the um, exhaust manifold locating things. You know, those sorts of things, flywheel bolts, for example, you're not going to plate all this sort of business. Um, I've got to take those out. There's more of these slotted ones. Um, that's the oil pump from Graham's engine. This is the one that came with Craig's that he started cleaning up. And I needed to find out which fasteners went there, so that's the reason I've sort of put that back together. So it's um, that will go back to him. I'll just pop it in this bag to keep it nice and sort of safe. And some of this stuff will inv invariably go back to Craig. 
and he'll probably sell it off because I don't think he intends to use it. Um, there's a front engine man I'll hang on to, the thrust plate for the camshaft, of course we'll use that, um, and the push rods and I'll just find 12 straight ones and get them, oh, that doesn't look too good, oh no, that's alright, <laughs> we'll just find 12 straight ones. So there's all sorts of 5 16 fine, 3 8 fine, 5 16 coarse, all this sort of other business there. And a myriad of these slotted quarter inch coarse um, screws, fasteners, which will be for the tinware and the side, I would think. Um, rockery covers, that's got an awfully large hole there. Just a moment. Both of these look fairly good. Um, I do love this. This is a tiny bit smaller, or at least it looks more, it looks different from the other one I've got. I left the other one with Tony, because he's hydroblasting still, what do you call it? In his hot tank. I love this one. This has got, um, to rinse out with Kero on the top. I think I prefer this one. That looks a bit battered in there. But this has a dent, quite a large dent there. This one looks quite straight. They can get put away. The rest of that stuff will string and plate. Um, so I'm not concerned really about any of that. That's got a clutch cover which is in a remarkable condition. I can almost just wipe that and stick it back on. That's wonderful. I'm very happy with that. This is Craig's Dizzy. Um, it looks lovely. I love the label on it. The car came with a few. It came with that one and it came with that one. So we can just pick which ones we want. And it won't be that one. <laughs> um, and the rest of this is just a couple of park lights for the front. There's push rods in here, a couple of coils. I want a 12 volt one. Yes, that's a 12 volt coil. And the old GD40R. <laughs> I do have a BMC coil I like, which I'll do. Um, just a matter of pulling some odds and ends off. These are the old hose clamps, which, you know, may well be knackered, but I might be able to, I might just throw them in the plating box. It doesn't cost any more, you know what I mean? And just see how they come back. That might be right. I'll stick that in the hydro box. Um, Move all this mess. We've got a distributor here. This is the best of three that aren't that great. Um, I guess we've got to set this up to the right depth when we get it back, but I want to get this cleaned up. And we'll put all the distributor ones. I'll label these so I know exactly where these parts come from. Oh God, what a mess. We've got that seal in there we need to dig out. I use, normally use dentist tools for these. Oh god, that's hard. God. That wouldn't have sealed too well. And we'll get a, a um, punch. That should have a punch in it there. Um, what's going on up here? I don't like that wire. Wrong colour and those things on the end of it, which is a case of no thanks. But, you know... For what we're doing at the moment, and from what they did in the past, it's probably not too bad. It's off this, that looks like rust has got to that. That's the pivot for the back advance. <laughs> I don't know about this. Um, it does show you the original colour. Graham told me about this. There's sort of a like a Ford blue. Um, I'll tidy this up and have a good look at that colour because I can probably match it alright. And we'll see what we can do with the rest of it. It's got two of them. Loads of small screws with small washers. Plating those is going to be a pain in the ass. But if I can, oh goodness, if I can um, save some money and do it myself, rather than spending four hundred dollars at an ignition joint, I'm going to do that. Goodness me. Okay, I'm gonna get the bags out. I'm gonna start forgetting where everything goes. 
pull this little bloke apart. Do some more of that plating nonsense that I do. Right. Oh, that's got a little spring in it. Yeah. Oh no, it's a spring. Idiot. <laughs> That nut goes down there, you moron. <laughs> That'll look good. We'll do that. A uh, little filter. This isn't in bad shape, actually. Actually, it's a heck of a lot better than I thought it would be. Uh, let's pop some screws out and have a look at the diaphragm. It always makes me dubious when water runs out. You can imagine it's not going to look too schmicko inside. Why is it always the last thing I do when I turn the camera on? It's the most difficult to do. Yeah. Okay. I didn't bargain for all this water. Hmm. I'm tipping it behind here. Well, how do you get these off again? I cannot remember. Probably still works though. Can I? Where's a bit of brass? Can I just. I should use a piece of wood actually. What if I could just tap that out? Here is the pin. Is the arm going to come out? Oh, we have a pin. Can we take you out now? spring. How in the bloody hell does that come out? Meanwhile the Holden boys are all looking at me going, you are an idiot Anderson. That should just come out. It just come out, does it? Oh, butchery. Lovely. Okay. I wouldn't dare reuse that, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. And just full of water. So I think it's got some sort of some sort of hat on it. All right, that can go to hydro. This one can too. What to take those valves and that gasket out? Yeah, that can go. The rest of this stuff can stay, and we'll plate the screws. Because we're stupid like that. I did this with the Sigma, I think. The um, is that going to flick out? That's really stuck. The fuel pump was knackered in that, and the replacement was three hundred and something dollars. And I ended up um, getting a kit, which they don't make anymore. But I found one. Somebody pointed me in the right direction. That'll just be an old cork. Yeah, it is. Gasket. But I love these things. I used to watch when Dad did the, um, filled the car with fuel when I was a kid. I used to watch the, remember the glass on the side of the bowsers, which had little plastic balls and they'd swivel around. As you were filling your car with fuel. Damn. This could be difficult to get out because I look fairly rusty. But it's worth making this stuff, that's the old carburetor finish too, it's worth making this stuff look good, as well as functioning well. And that's perfect, it's got that great little carrier for the um, valves. And I dare say this would come in a kit, but probably not the little, probably not the little thing here, I don't think that would. And then they just punch out, I'm assuming. Yep. This is that I've wrecked it. <laughs> and then that comes out as one, you moron. <laughs> Alright, doesn't matter. The thing is, they're not damaged at all. I can reuse those and I can make a gasket if I need to, but I'm assuming you can get some sort of kit for them. So that can be Sent to the blaster of hydrainers. What's in there? Oh, just spider webs. Cool. 
There you go. They'll come back looking amazing. The wiping motor. This doesn't look too bad and it rotates, which is really spiffy. Uh, right, so. That'll be 7 16 probably, but. Oh no, it's 10 mil. I thought I could just sheath and belt it off, but it looks like it's got a broken bit on it there anyhow. Is that left hand thread? Don't tell me that's left hand thread. Oh dear, it was a left hand thread. I was almost very stupid. Now that is not getting taken anyway. I need to keep that there because replacing it would be very difficult indeed. Let's have a look here. Be fun. Maybe attack another end. Okay, let's run up with the gearbox. We've got these bits. We'll take those out. Because we need to. Okay, we've got a terminal block. We've got to be careful of that. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Right. Uh, what's the story with that guy? Has it got a little snow washer on him? That might be causing some locking effect. Okay. Spiffy. I'm spline. Now that is knackered. This one here. That's actually broken, which I didn't know. Got to watch these, I just bent one of those. Yeah, I'd be surprised if this thing's knackered inside. It actually should be quite fresh, or at least quite serviceable. And there are two types. There's a blue horizontal type and a black vertical type. Graham said this is the black vertical type. At least I think that's what he said. I have no idea. If it was a Ford, I'd probably know a little bit more than I do. Awesome. Look at the brownness. Oh, yes. Baby. Oh, gosh. That's terrible. Right. And it smells like old electrical phones. That is... Can I knock that out? Yes, I can, because I just did. Where's the self-park on these things, I wonder? Maybe it doesn't have one. Let's have a look at this. You guys are going to love this stuff. Oh, yes. Unless the self part. Uh oh, what's that? That's probably it. <laughs> Have I got a clue what I'm doing? No, not really. <laughs> oh, I've got some idea, but I'm just not as clued up with this stuff as I probably should be before I'm taking on a gig like this. <laughs> That's kind of deep. It's easy to clean the all grease though. Ooh. And what was that one that was underneath that thing? Damn it. This is why this needs servicing. Because General Motors never thought. This grease has to last 60 years or whatever it is till some bloke is messing around with his crap in his garage. Nobody would have ever thought that. Or at least I wouldn't have thought. That could be a little park there too. I think that might be part of it. In fact, I'd wager I'd bet that's part of it. And the thing that worries me about this is I really don't... It's got a couple of rubber feet in it too. I really don't want to mess too much with it in terms of punching bushes out to get plating done for the sake of cosmetics when I can just paint it. And I might end up doing that just using the old Mitsubishi Gentle Silver. It's a good colour. 
And there's the worm off the motor there. Can I pull that gear out? Yes, I can. As Bob the Builder says, can we fix it? Apparently Bob the Builder swore, or one of the narrators swore on it, and it got through censorship, and everyone's disappointed in Bob. Uh oh, here we go, there's another thing. Where's that crap I just pulled out? It goes under there. Alright, well I'm tipping, now might be a time to pop these screws out. Which is good, because I can give it a good smack in the ass. And they come out. The one has never ceased. And there'll be washers there. Are we going to plate these? You betcha. We're going to plate everything. Because I have a plating disease. I love doing it. Right, this scares me a bit because can I take that bottom bell off? I actually want to do it the other way. Hang on a minute. Can I take you off? Look how squiggy this thing is inside. That's that button I was telling you about. That's to disconnect it. So. This ain't going to be too much fun. It's in beautiful condition inside. Look at that. What a bloody shame. This is soldered. So I may have to... I don't really know what to do because they're tipped over where that bush is. Um, I think the safest thing to do with this is just paint it. I don't think it's going to be a recommended thing to do it any other way. Just because it looks so good. I think what we'll do is we'll clean up the inside and put it back together. And then we've got this great core. I think we will plate those things if you see them. It's going to look crap. I, I can't stand painted screws. So, I think we'll pack it and I think the best thing to do is paint it. Even here we've got little sort of plugs there. We've got a brass guy there. I'm not even sure what that does. And there's a scented bush. Um, and I just think this is beautiful and original and it works. I just don't really know, or can't really see the point in pulling it apart. We can do the silver bit, and we can do the black bit. I'd be inclined to do silver, black, silver on the back, and also on the top there. I think that's probably the best way to handle this. That's a beautiful little piece. Starter motor, on the other hand, really does look quite thick. I'll take these leads off. And we'll see what we've got here. We'll just move that millipede. I don't know why he's there. Come on, come on. Um, take these off. And we'll have to make a note. I'm going to stop in a moment and just bag everything. So that I know precisely where it all goes. What's that? That's a nice. This is quite weird, this thing. It's different. It's a Bosch, an old-fashioned sort of Bosch. But it's it's actually quite strange. Where's the terminal to activate? It must be there. This is the starter motor in the video where Graham had the thing going. And, uh, you know, I mean, you can't even be bothered getting the right tools. I'm just using all the wrong tools. But I'm keeping an eye on all this stuff and I'm thinking, yeah, I probably should start bagging stuff up now because I'm going to lose track of stuff if I'm not very careful. Uh, what have we got? Interesting, isn't it?
haven't got the right size for that. Should do. Oh, there we go. Do you like my tidy work area? This is not how to do anything. If you're serious. Sometimes these are brass too. They're not, but sometimes they are. Okay, what have we got in here? Is that a nut? Oh, it looks a bit like a nut. Alright, what's on the other side? Hopefully the head of it. Oh, nothing on the other side. Nice. <sighs> what happens if we just pull this off? It's not 3 8 it's not 7 16th, and it isn't metric. Yes, it is metric. It's 10 millimeters. It's probably actually Whitworth. Don't know. Let's keep that loose. I want to take the whole front of this thing off and have a look and clean it all up. And apparently, it works well. Haven't tested it. Don't really care at this point. <laughs> but. Being crazy and stupid. Well, it always keeps you on your feet, doesn't it? Let's keep going and see what this little bastard divulges. What is going on with you? Stay there, Mr. Bendix. That's got the fork. The fork's in the way. That's a pain in the neck. Let's just take this out and see what happens. Let's try and put metric on there. That would be the... Oh, there it is, tricky little bastard. Hang on a minute. Oh, here's my punch. Out you go. That should relent now. That's as weird as you can get. There's the collar there. I've just got to push that up. And that will come out. And Bob's your uncle. Right, let's clean that guy up. Super. That's a rather tasty looking Bendix gear. These are weird. Never seen anything like that before. Oh, they come out. Sweet. Let's plate them. Grouse. But, you know, in, in all, that's not bad. I'll get that hydrate. Okay, still messing around with these distributors. I've picked another one. Everything's filthy around here. I do ask you to excuse me. But, I've got my series of little bags so I can keep everything in order. And what's interesting about these, um, there's a couple of things. The gear is a total pig to get off because you've got to drill the end of a um, manually sort of peened over rivet. How which I've kept for um, reference. I don't know if you can get new ones or you change that to a roll pin. I'm not sure. I would imagine you just change it over to a roll pin. But this one has a more a better um, interior, if you know what I mean. The casing is not quite as nice, but the interior is a bit better. Can I get this off this condenser? Now, as far as plating is concerned, there's a couple of things with this. I can't actually wire these screws on. They're just too small and we'll lose them. I might hydroblast them, and believe it or not, clear coat them. I've got to paint the body of the distributor um, and just see how that goes. But Unless I give them to, I know a guy that will do them, but he'll charge a thousand dollars for a sandwich bag worth of stuff, and I'm not going to get in that road. Not really a thousand, but he overcharges. Um, now these are supposed to be not dissimilar to the Ford Blue, and that's what they originally and the starter motor's blue as well. And I hate the idea of that because I like the cast iron look. Which is just the bare. Oh, that's got a much better insulator in it. 
that looks a little bit on the healthier side. Let me get this guy out. Remove that pigtail wire. Here we go. We'll leave that together. Right. All right. Let's have a look at this advanced plate. Hmm. It's, I don't know, that's free. We'll clean that up. We don't need to do anything else with it. That's good. And then we'll have to muck around with this guy. Hang on a second. Oh, that was too much of the old slippery stuff. Awesome. That's exactly what I wanted to do. And that's very healthy. As long as it's still straight. And we're going to check these advanced weights. And that's all working beautifully. This is the dizzy, guys. This is the one we're going with. Now, the next thing is that label. I want to, what I'd love to do with this, and the purists will hate it, is I would like to hydroblast it and then clear it. So it's basic cast iron. I love that look. Um, apparently they've got to be blue though. I'm not sure I'm going to do the blue. I might upset a few people and decide not to. Right, let's take you off. Goodness. And they can be blasted and plated and all that stuff. You can go in there. I'll loosen that a bit. I should probably do two distributors in case anyone else needs one. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I've got to pack some stuff up clean some stuff up. This is just horrendous. Nobody works in conditions like this. I'm the only person because, well, zero stuff's a given. So let's clean it up a bit and I shall be back. Let's talk. Let's yarn. S wiper motor, um, as we said, this is getting a paint job. I was a bit sort of confused about this. It looks like it's plated on the inside, but it's non-ferrous metal, so it's cast, um, uh, some sort of alloy. Uh, clean it up paint job I think that's all I'm going to do with that I'm not going to bother it's too good on the inside to do anything sort of invasive if you know what I mean it's really cool it's actually the best wipe mode I've seen inside that's the all cap we're using EJ it's a little bit smaller than the earlier ones apparently it's what Graham told me and it's got that lovely thing about washing it in care so we're going to use that the distributor that's what I've got left. And initially I was using this one. These pins are a pain. You can't just knock them out, as I found out. You have to uh, drill the end of them, then knock them, I'm assuming replace them with some sort of um, roll pin. The <coughs> interesting thing with this is it's got a lubrication nipple for some sort of grease in there. This one is actually lubricated by the engine, which is actually better in my book. That's a little bit oldie school though, so I might go with that. I can't help thinking this one, but the insides from that were better. I can make one up. Um, so if I miss the boat with that, it doesn't matter. That's the Advance, works well. Um, just a little bit grotty and dirty, but that can be fixed. That's not a hard thing to do. Of course, we don't want to lose any washers, got to clean this all up. There's another thrusty at the back there. And also the points cam, that sort of stuff needs to be cleaned. So that's easy enough. I'm not at all worried about any of that. This is cast. Um, these are originally blue and not far off Holden Blue Motor Blue when it gets old. It's got almost a greeny look to it, um, although there it is there in its normal blue form. Kind of similar to XC Falcon Blue that I mixed. I just don't know if I want a blue distributor. I would sooner blast that and clear it so it's raw cast iron. I think that looks nuts. Anyway, we'll see. I'm not chasing dead on originality as you know. Haven't looked at that yet. That's the reg. We can have a look at that in a minute. Um, Startery motor. Starter motor doesn't look too bad. I've just given it a rudimentary, let's remove the grease clean. This is another item that's meant to be blue. Not sure. I like black starter motors. <laughs> uh, the bell on the back of it looks knackered, while rusted and pitted. Um, I don't know that that would plate terribly well. I might get it hydroblasted instead and just give it a paint job. Because I think if I plate it, I mean, I can put it in the plating, I suppose. But being as pitted as it is, it'll look crap. It'll look better with paint on it, but eh, it's all good. 
Now, the other thing with that, there's the armature, looks pretty good. The compensator has a tiny bit of wear, but it's still serviceable, I think. Um, it's just sticking up a bit on the edge there and in there. So really, sticking this in a lathe and just peeling a tiny bit off, you'd probably get it out with five or ten thousandths, would be fine. Um, that does have, however, worn bushes, brushes in there. I don't know if you can see in there. Can you see? Oops, I've turned the light off. That's pretty dumb. Um, they're kind of worn. So I'm going to go and see Al, a friend of mine who's an auto -elec. See if he can get me some new ones, and I'll put new brushes in, and he might want to resurface that. I can do it at work, but of course, hmm, can't get it to work. So, that's the starting motor. Solenoid, same deal, meant to be blue. I don't know, I'm not loving it, but what do you do? Let me go and get the gearbox, I want to talk about that. The gearbox, this thing is absolutely beautiful inside. Um, it even got all of its original glyptal coating in there. Um, I've given this a bath of uh, Prepsol to get rid of the oil. There's still stuff leaking out of it. Uh, I'll use a cleaner rag than that, I think. And, I don't know. There's no play in anything. Gear sets all look beautiful. It's, it's actually quite incredible. I'm thinking of giving it a rattle can restoration. I've given it a quick clean on the outside of the case. The... People that said it's an AH1 are actually correct. It is from an AH Holden. Um, it does have a number in it. H33393. I'm assuming that's EH, but it's the same as EJ. It's just the bell housing, the, sorry, the, the, what do you call it? Yeah, well, the bell housing and extension housing are different. I could have been changed over, over later, but it does have an EH extension housing on it still. Um, I'm really liking this. And from that viewpoint, I'm just thinking about putting it back together and giving it a paint job. Now, I did this on the XC's four speed, and I did it on the XW's um, automatic. Pulled the pan off, had a look at it. Well, I got another guy to do that one, actually, in memory. And it was meant to have the new seals, selector sharp seals. So I ended up having to pull the bell housing and everything off on the ground while it was in the car. And I had a good look at it all then, and it was perfect. Gears are all marked, are all, sorry, unmarked. Any marks you can see are just remnants of old residues and stuff like that. But it really is a peachy box. And so from that viewpoint, I'm really tempted just to try it. I mean, an overhaul kit's $230. It's not a big deal. But I don't know. It might be worth just giving it a bit of a rattle can resto. Now, it might be worth still doing. There's a couple of things I don't like about this. And that's this here. This sort of selector gear. It's lost its harding, and this has been rusty inside before. This has been overhauled before this gearbox. Yeah, that's why it feels so good now. Um, but if you look at the hardening there, that's been rusted. See that? Um, I hope you can see that. So it might be worth also, these are a little bit where it's been crashing in here. These are a little bit um, rough on the edges too. So it might be worth just changing that with the one I've got. That's one, one way I can go around it. But for now, I'm not going to bother doing anything for the moment. Well, this is only a part of the crap I've got in terms of scrap sheet metal and bits of right L. Big Clevo engine mount things. Found this. Um, and also bits of desk. Um, the reason for that is because I am going to... You can see my shadow make up a dolly to carry this around or at least to um, turn it into a running engine stand if you know what I mean but I just want to use Craig's block before I take it back to um, get something on a sort of a table if you know what I mean some sort of platform so that I can add to it when I get more metal and you know make a proper stand dark, well it's getting dark, and I've sort of given up, I can't be bothered. Um, I always weld sort of outside, and so therefore I just flux cord, which no one will agree to being alright stuff, a lot of people don't like flux cord, 
but I've got a bottle that Dave gave me with my with my welder, but no one would fill it because it wasn't their bottle. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. You just got to go with what you can. You're gonna be changing the dog's water that's for sure. Um, so I'll just finish just looking over this, and I'll show you what I'm in the midst of doing. Those braces are far too short. That's the last of the RHS I've got. So I'll get it in. Well, actually, I can talk about it out here. I'll put it up on its end. This is what I enjoy more than pretty much anything else I do, and that's making stuff out of junk. And we've seen what the XW started like and the XC and, you know, the little BMC motor that we dragged out of the shed and made a stand out of that junk. Well, this is the same sort of thing. Now, the difference is this is going to be the busiest engine stand I've got because it's going to have the whole car on it, literally. It's going to have the gearbox on it, the dashboard, and we're talking about the car's dashboard here, as well as separate gauges for oil and temperature. But I want the whole car to run off this stand. I want indicators on it, headlights on it, taillights on it. I want a freaking number plate light on it, right? I want to know that once I've done the wiring, done the mechanical, put the gearbox on, that everything runs. So when we get the body, we can just take a bit, you know, take this apart bit by bit. Now, now I've run out of RHS. I've only got one little bit left. So I actually have to buy some. And what we're going to do with this, that's just the basic stand for the engine itself. And I haven't gusseted where it's mounted here. It's got just two bits of whatever there. Uh, nor have I done it here. And that's leaning back a tiny bit. I didn't get it square, but hmm, don't care. So what we're going to do is this. I've ordered some wheels, but it's click and collect at the moment. So you can't get things when you want them. So in a couple of days when those wheels arrive, I'm going to weld the wheels on so I can just wheel it around. I'm going to weld up along the top here, a longer piece of RHS coming out from the back. A bit of it will go into the gearbox. A bit of it will come up right angle up to the radiator. And I'm also going to put a brace along the top of it as well. And that'll just be bolted in. I'll weld on some nuts. So that's all bolted in, that rail at the top. And that's what I can you know, secure the wiring and everything to. And everything else will just hang off it on tabs and that sort of stuff. Um, not my idea. It was Graham's. I did say to him I'm going to do a running stand for it. And he goes, it's a pity you can't really put a whole EJ on a running stand. I thought, well, that's not a bad idea. So that's what we're going to do. I've got to change that water too. It looks terrible. The dogs don't always drink out of that. So that's where we're at. Um, I'm just going to put it away for now. I'm sick of looking at it today. Right. A big, massive, dirty wiring. This is what I love about old cars. This indicator switch feels really horrible. It's a tense toy, good neck. It's obviously clagged up inside. I can pull that apart. There are screws there. Clean it out. This unscrews. That'll get painted in the Wimbledon white. That'll get chromed. And uh, happy days. It's going to look good. So, indicator switch is there, which is great. The rest of it is just a big jumbled mess. Now, some of it looks like it's about to break, but it's got that bulldust stuff on it. No, it doesn't. It's about to break. <laughs> I don't know. Seriously, that could be the headlight switch. That looks like a loom connector. No idea. Uh, so we've just got to go through it all. Sometimes there's um, <clears throat> some aftermarket. Oh, hang on, I have a latte. Yum. Sometimes some of the wires are that stiff and horrible, like these ones. Look at this. That's actually not that bad, but like it's really horrible. I will cut this back. See, it's cracking when you do that. I'll cut it back here somewhere and just solder new wires in and then re-tape it. And so I'll take the tape off first just to see what's lying beneath. But I've got the manual over yonder, but I haven't looked at it yet. But we've got this sort of thing. That looks like it goes on the battery um, or generator. No idea. Oops. I'm just going to have to stretch it out and have a look. The other thing we've got to do, of course, apart from sort of taking the tape off, there's a flasher can. It's either been full of water or it's just sunburned. I think some of this stuff's sunburned from just been sitting in derelict cars out in the sunshine. Maybe this isn't as good as I thought. <laughs> I don't know. I think some of these connectors have just come off. I've got to figure it all out. So, you know, it's good. We can make something out of it, that's for sure. That doesn't do anything. And these are a real no-no scotchy locks. That would be for a radio or something like that. And that's probably a washer. That'll be an aftermarket washer bottle. 
That looks like a pump for a washer bottle. Um, you used to see these things all the time. It's cool though, I love this, because at the end of the day, the consensus is I'll just chuck it out and make get a new one, but no, I don't want to. Yep, aftermarket washer. We won't be needing that. I don't know what the washers are in here, G. But if I, I might put an electric one in anyway. I don't like pulse washers, and I'll put a new wiring in for it. So that can be factored in when we retape the loom and all this sort of stuff. That's bad. That could be, um, actually the wiring there is in pretty good shape. That could be oil pressure or, or oil switch, sorry, or temperature switch. I've gone around and I've labelled. I've used the manual as a reference. I haven't put any voltage through here and checked anything with a test light yet, but some of the wiring feels awfully stiff. It could be the wiring, so well, that's quite um, high capacity wire, if you know what I mean, so it's bound to be stiff. Some of the wiring is nice and supple. It's, in fact, it's beautiful, and it's the outer shell. It's all sort of hard and mangy. So I'm going to take all the insulation off. This is easily the best old loom I've ever encountered. They have these bits of white fabric tape. And some of them have come off. And where that's happened, I'm just putting a little bit of this so I can see. Electrical, just a, what do you call masking tape so I can see. But they've tied off. Whoa! God, I'm still thing. I'm going to bring that down a bit. But they've tied off each piece in a simple knot. So you can literally just unpick the knot and the, the thing unravels. Here it goes now. And this black stuff is all hard and horrible, but it's completely sacrificial. Look and see, it's brought that out. Now, this is better than I've seen Ford do. Ford do a similar thing on junctions, but they tend to use the black tape and it's not as clear to get it off. Now this stuff is amazing. And as I said, it's purely sacrificial. So what lies underneath is beautiful wire. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It's lovely and supple. It's this stuff which has gone hard. So for 60 years old, it is just the best stuff since sliced bread. There's another knot. We can see where to go with that. So I'll just take this off and it'll wrap around here. Now those fabric guides show you exactly how to tape it. So when you re-tape the loom, it's not going to end up being, you know, too short anywhere because you'll get it right the first time. Where does this go? So you can see there's no sticky residue, just incredibly good quality work. And then we go back here, undo that knot, and unravel the rest of it. Easiest thing I've ever seen. Now, quality like this isn't probably immediately obvious when the cars are newer. But this car is 60 years old, and it is just perfect how all this has stood the test of time. It's really, really good. And there's your guide, so you just take back. Great. Let's have a look at this. And just there's the knot. And off we go again. Right, well, here we go. This thing is so impressive. It's ridiculously impressive. Dashboard side up here engine bay down there. It's as easy as it gets. Um, your rear loom comes off here, your body loom, and then goes off to the back, tail lights and all this sort of stuff. Fuel tanks in there and that sort of thing will be in there as well. Um, stop light switch. Some of the plugs don't look great because they've been sunburnt, I think. Um, there's one that worries me and it's this one here. That's the dip switch. And that's not sunburned. That's actually being overloaded uh, to the point where that's been getting very hot. Um, what we used to do, or what some people used to do in the 80s, I had a friend, Luke, um, a good friend of Neil McClymonts, who I talk about from time to time. He had a lot of really high-performance cars, and what he used to do, or what he did with one, he said he shook it 9130s. Now, standard headlight halogen globes or seal beams are normally 6055, 60 watt for low and 55 for high. And people would retrofit halogen globes, you know, and this could have been last going in the 80s, it's quite possible, and stuck with 9130s in there, which will certainly bump the cr or crank up the um, current draw. That's a spare dip switch, a new one. I can't remember where it came from, if somebody gave it to me or I bought it, uh, for the XW, for the Falcon. Uh, I didn't use it because there was nothing wrong with the old one and I do, or I am of the opinion that the old stuff is better quality than the new. Uh, the brake light switch in the MG is a hydraulic one and that's a good example because 
if you get a hydraulic switch after market for an MGB or an Austin or Walsley or whatever, it'll blow straight away because it can't handle the 42 watts from between each tail line. So you have to put a relay in and that'll save it. So new ones like this, they're not often as good as the original stuff. So it may need a relay, not sure. If I'm going to put a relay in, now's the time to do it while the looms in bits because I can hide the wiring. But you can see that's the same sort of connector as the Falcon. Um, and it's just a bit melty. So aside from that though, the wiring is in outstanding condition. So I can fold this back. I can actually get a battery onto the positive side, which is here, and a test light on the negative and go through and test all the circuits. It's easy to do. That's what I did with the other cars. Um, looks really good. The only things of alarm are things like an asterisk. There's only one of them. That means the conductor there is absolutely knackered. It's either been trapped or whatever the case, it's a short waiting to happen. It's underneath there. Um, we can put new terminals on. Pardon me, any of the stiff wiring. That's nice and supple where it was protected by that wonderful black tape that General Motors used. And um, I'll just cut that up here and put a new a new wire on where it's all sort of stiff and horrible. That again just could be the tubing. I don't know. I'll take it off and find out. The same with this here. That looks pretty messed up. So again, that just looks like tape or something over there. But I'll go through it all. And if I don't want like it, I will take it off. That, in fact, goes between the generator and the reg. So I might put a new one on anyway. So quite a bit of current probably got through that. Uh, but generally speaking, it is absolutely lovely. And absolutely perfect for the use on an EJ Holden. Um, and our engine stand, for that matter. So we're going to do fabric on here. I've got some fabric. For fabric tape. Might put a new flusher can on. This doesn't look too healthy. But whatever the case, I'm stoked. Right, well, this is where we're at now. It's a nice little temporary table for it. I haven't even bolted those casters on. I've just welded the things. And it's nice and sturdy. Um, but that gives some sort of vague insight as to what we've got going on here. Plenty of uh, pardon me, clearance on it. You can see that back member's leaning down a little bit. I'm going to brace it back off there, down. Um, of course, we're going to have a member going over the top here. Um, for all the... You know, electrical and instrumentation, all that sort of stuff. There's plenty of room over this side to be putting bits and pieces. I might also gusset just between there and there on both sides. But at the end of the day, I think that's all, oh, sorry. But at the end of the day, I think that's fine. It's going to work well. Um, I'll order some steel, as we said before, just to go the full length. And the radiator section will be movable. That'll just have a, a captive nut and you can just bolt it on to the right sort of length out. I might put some round rod in the middle of it or something, I don't know. Where the back one will be permanent. And, you know, I've got to think about the exhaust as well. But, you know, I might have to have some bits and pieces hang off here and there for batteries and that sort of thing. But I want it to be fully operational. So on that note, I'll say thanks very much for watching. Take good care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. So let me know how you feel about these sort of clips. I don't know how it goes with copyright, putting sort of old advertisements and that sort of thing in the titles. Um, if I get pinned, well, I'm going to just stop doing it. This one, though, is really sexist. And it's just want you to know it's not my view. I put it in there for a bit of a laugh, but uh, please don't be offended. needs a man, but when there's no man around, when there's no man around, 
good years should be. What do you reckon? Is she having... <laughs> 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 